Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Place of Binding of Isaac after birth plus where we are no slouch with seven wins in a row. Um still just making making roads, you know? HJ19 V6 HN. All roads lead to Rome. Allegedly. But that doesn't even make any sense. You're gonna tell me that I mean I know that this is not um it's not a literal expression. I don't want to be overly pedantic, but how can all roads lead to Rome? What about if you're in a, an island nation, sweetheart? You know, how could those roads lead to Rome? If you've got to take a ferry to get someplace, I don't think that counts as a road. So what is the spirit of the sentence? You can get to Rome from anywhere? Yeah, you can get to anywhere from anywhere. Otherwise, how would anyone ever get there in the first place? Anyway, this has been my TED Talk. Thanks for being here. Um, well, it really just meant that Rome was the center of the cultural world during it. Yeah, I know. I'll have you know I listen to history audiobooks, so I'm something of a scholar myself. I've been thinking about, about cooking up a meme. You know it's getting serious when I'm thinking about cooking up a meme. Um... And it's, you know, it's a, it's a contrasting picture. So, you know, the first picture is like what I thought it would be like when I started listening to non-fiction audiobooks to fall asleep. Look, it's not, a, it, this meme is not going to get 10 million likes and retweets, okay? This is like a, a 350 retweet at best, but that doesn't mean it's not worth it. So the left is a picture and it's like, you know, what I thought would happen to me when I listened to history audiobooks before bed. And it's just maybe like a picture of Megamind is my thinking. Try to make it appeal to the generation slightly younger than me that's online a little bit more often than the average person that's my age. And then the right photo is uh, what actually happened and it's just a picture of like me sleeping very soundly or like uh, something sleeping very soundly. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to find the most relatable possible option there. I've been listening to um, historical audiobooks, podcasts, etc., etc., to fall asleep for... I mean, I, I would say at this point we're at a decade. I, I think I have learned quite literally absolutely nothing. Anything that I have learned... I can't believe this worked, by the way. Anything that I have learned from listening to history, audiobooks, and podcasts to fall asleep has exclusively been from nights where I didn't sleep very well. So I remember, you know, an extra 25 minutes before bed, and then like a little bit of like half asleep, half awake stuff. <laughs> Apart from that, it's like, you know, this is Audible, and then that's the last thing I remember. Audible, or Random House, Penguin Audiobooks presents A History of the Crusades, as read by Mark Wahlberg. Okay, you, you, I had to, you gotta keep it going all the way. Oh, okay, okay. It's a very interesting moment here. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, well, here's the deal. I think we should go with IV bag. Um, obviously, I, I gotta be real careful here, don't get me wrong, this is a spicy situation. That's what I wanted to see, to be honest. We used IV bag and got a little extra HP out of something we were going to get hurt on anyway. And then if you could just provide me with an HP upgrade, we would be off to the races, buddy. And I gotta tell you, we're off to the races, buddy. Um, I'd also like to get an arcade on the next floor. So, we will see how things shake out against the boss. If we have the HP to spare, we will, um... Use IV bag if necessary to get the five cents if we don't get something that gives us two cents or more to begin with. And um, we can always like just get the blood bank or the arcade chance. And then use our hermit card immediately to like buy a spirit heart. That's that's my, my dream here. That's called doing the little things right. Doing the little things right doesn't mean you never take a risk. That's a very good item. Just means that uh, you, you also recognize, you know, when you take a risk, you want, if possible, like a safety net. You want you want a, a way to keep yourself safe. 
So we didn't get what we wanted here, which was a spirit heart, but we can at least buy that. We're at three, and then Wheel of Fortune. I'm gonna get real weird with this one here. Um, we will not take Locust of War, of course. Which is just, uh, a slap in the face. Car Battery? I don't know if we want Car Battery if we're gonna roll IV Bag, which I think moves it from, like, Essential Purchase into, like, maybe territory? I think we're at maybe territory. But for now, we gotta focus just just briefly. Make sure we have our best chance possible of actually getting the deal with the devil on this floor. And then we can banter. It's all the banter. It's a two floor minimum to start banter. You guys see Jerry Seinfeld has a new uh, Netflix comedy? I'm sorry, I can't. I can't. Not until I see it. I can't. I do, all I'm gonna say is I watched the trailer. Um. I had some downtime today. We were at a doctor's appointment. I wasn't allowed to go into the office. So I, I watched the trailer, and I was like, man, this is... Jerry really, he's... he's And don't get me wrong. I actually like Seinfeld a lot. Who doesn't? I really like comedians in cars getting coffee, to be honest with you. Hold on. We have three HP. I think we just play it as smart as possible and literally just grab this and bounce. I know Gimpy is great, obviously, but let's, let's hedge our bets here for now. Um... I, I really like it, you know, it's just too... I mean, I, I think Jerry is funny. I don't necessarily think uh, his his stand-up has uh, as much nascence as it does in uh, 2020 as it might have in, like, 1983. But I think he's a funny guy. Like, when he talks with his friends, I'm like, this guy's got some humorous observations. Um, but I was watching the trailer for it. And he's like, I think great and sucks are are right next to one another on the spectrum of quality. Like, what do you say when you drop your... Or what happens uh, with your ice cream slides off the top of your ice cream cone and lands on the sidewalk? It sucks. What do you say? Oh, great. I was like, damn. That's Jerry's, like, quintessential joke. <laughs> that is... That's Seinfeld 101, which is... Uh, I don't know, for better or for worse. Will I watch it? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. It's not. It's only that or that show where it's too hot to handle. Two, or not two contestants. Twelve hot contestants are on an island. They'll win $100,000 if they can resist having intercourse for one month. Now, what kind of show? Can you believe? I know that this is... Uh, and apparently I'm on my own set now, but can you believe the society that we've created? We're, we're almost living in idiocracy. I know that that's overstated. And I've watched, you know, as we've descended into idiocracy and people have been like, we're starting to live in idiocracy. And everybody is going, that's, uh, I've heard that before. Yeah, but that, maybe you've heard it before, not because it's like a lazy joke, but because it's actually happening. You know? Jeopardy started airing in the early 1980s. If you beat three other people that are all, or two other people, I should say, that are also geniuses at trivia, you could win up to 30,000 American dollars. But if you get the final question wrong, you pretty much lose it all. That's tough. Year 2000, who wants to be a millionaire starts popping off. Now, you can win, I don't know, 30 times more than you would on Jeopardy. All you gotta do is answer 12 questions. That's not that bad at all. 12 questions for a million dollars? Now it's like, I, I don't know, keep your thing in your pants. Here's a hundred grand. It's, it's out of control, dude. Where is... Is this where the stimulus packages are going? To, to subsidize this, this weird... Reality show? I don't understand. Back in, and this is a very boomer bit because it's back in my day, but back in my day, on Fear Factor, Joe Rogan was like, I don't know, eat this scorpion. And if you ate the scorpion, you didn't even get anything. You just didn't get eliminated. And then if you climbed on the side of the Burj Dubai with two suction cups like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, you might win 50 grand. As soon as you get the big check for 50 grand, the IRS comes in and says, I'll take 21. You, you leave that show with $29,000 and a, a taste for an animal you cannot safely consume in the United States of America. 
Joe Rogan's like, hey, okay, stage one, we're just going to throw rocks at you, and the first person to say ow gets eliminated. Stage two, eat God. Stage three, I want you to stand on the wing of this biplane while it does loop-de-loops over the San Francisco Bay. The winner... Gets a 12-month subscription to Spotify Premium. I do like the idea of Spotify Premium, though. A platform for all the Scots in your life. We got any Scots watching today? I'm on a roll. I don't know what's happening. I feel like I haven't met a Scot in a long time. Here's When I think of Scots, here's what I think of. Scottsdale, Arizona. Scott Lang, a.k.a. Ant-Man. And then... Scott, um, whatever his name is, who is also better known as Cyclops from the X-Men. <laughs> Scott, no, Scott Stevens is the NHL defenseman who ended several people's careers with egregious hit elbows to the face. Those were clean hits back then. Okay, sure, officer. Um... I feel like I don't hear Scott that much anymore. It's one of those... I mean, I, I'll tell you, to be honest, I feel like I don't hear Ryan that much anymore. I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, man, I haven't met... Like, a, I haven't met a Ryan that's like 10 years younger than myself. Now, I don't uh, consort with a lot of uh, people in their early 20s, or even their mid-20s, or even their 30s, or anyone, really. Um, however, I feel like, feel like I was part of like that... The, the Ryan moment, where you got, you know, your your Goslings, and your Reynolds, and your Mies, and your your Seacrest. I don't know how old Ryan Seacrest is. I think that he may actually be, like, 70. He seems like one of those guys that's, like, he's just been permanently tanned and bleach blonde since I was, like, 11 years old. You know what? That's a great question. I'm going to say that Ryan Seacrest is 47 years old. How old is Ryan Se How old is Ryan Seacrest? Please. He's 45. Now I want to Ryan, if you're watching this, I didn't predict that you were older than you actually are because you look older than you actually are. The reality is those situ of the situation <clears throat> is that you look like one of those guys who is, who appears younger than he is, but puts a lot of effort into appearing younger than he is. And as a result, I was like, maybe this guy's doing the ultimate switcheroo and he's actually closing in on his early 50s. Why not? I, by the way, I've, I've recently I've started to believe that chaos is actually not a good uh, item at all. I'm, I'm kind of moving it on my power rankings from, like, situational, or from, from always take to situational. But I, I can't deny it does raise our guppy odds. Ain't no doubt about that. By the way, if you're like, who the heck is Ryan Seacrest? Ryan Seacrest is um, one of the on-screen talents involved with the American Idol franchise and also hosts Dick Clark's Rocking New Year's Eve. So essentially, he has been certified by corporate America as being the least offensive possible television personality. Ryan Seacrest is, it's, it's probably $80 million to hire him to host one event. But you are going to get somebody where when he's on the screen, a cross section of average Americans and I'm talking, you know, across income levels, age levels, education levels. Pretty much everybody's like, yeah, I don't dislike him. <laughs> if that's what you need for your media property, Ryan Seacrest could be yours for the low, low price of like probably a lot of money because I think he's done very well for himself. I'm not besmirching the good name of Ryan Seacrest. They call me the Seacrest. <laughs> I've been hosting for a long time. You may know him from his famous hits such as Who Will Go Home? We'll tell you 
right after this break. He always hits you with the... He, he makes the poison pill like as quick as, and as painless as possible. Right after the break. And then the American Idol stinger goes, um, you know the, you know, you know the song. Why do we not have a show that is just the bad auditions from American Idol? That would, look, I was part of the American Idol generation. I mean, so was everybody that was around at that time, to be honest. It was like one of the most popular shows in history when it was airing. Um, I think it came back, I don't know, I get it confused with the masked singer and the voice and America's Got Talent and you, you get the idea. All of those. All those shows where they're like, You can sing, but you're ugly! I can't believe it! That might sound like I'm being mean, but I'm, I'm actually shining a spotlight on uh, the show being mean, in my personal opinion at least. Remember when Susan Boyle got famous? Everybody was like, look at her, look at her! Look at her! She's got, like, big eyebrows, and then she started singing, and her voice was beautiful, and everybody was like, I was wrong to bully her. I didn't realize that my superficiality prevented me from recognizing another one of her talents that is also somewhat superficial. <laughs> I didn't realize that just because she had unplucked eyebrows, she could still have the voice of an angel. I did. That's amazing. I've learned a lot about about humanity today. Um, but I was part of that American Idol generation. And I always, once like the first couple of seasons were done, you know, I saw my uh, Kelly Clarkson's and my uh, Justin Guarini's and my Clay Aiken's and my Ruben Studdard's. I went, you know, the show, uh, it, it doesn't really appeal to me that much anymore, but I still would make some time to watch the auditions. Because sometimes you see somebody it was like placing a bet. You'd see somebody and be like, I wonder if this person could sing. What are we in for? Are we in for a little schadenfreude? Or are we in for a little, uh, you know, something in incredibly inspiring? Um, I, I like that aspect. You might say that a show that is just um, auditions so you can laugh at bad singers is cruel. I don't know. Let me give you my opinion on that. As a bad singer who sings a lot, it doesn't bother me at all. Moreover, a lot of television is cruel in one way or the other. If, if you want to think of it through the lens of anybody being even slightly derided or mocked is, is cruelty, then, you know, I would, I would honestly say the vast majority of nonfiction television that is not merely, you know, like a historical documentary, which doesn't even air on TV anymore because the History Network is just uh, Brian Shaw lifting heavy historical artifacts and then Pawn Stars. Um, then, then I would argue that, you know, most television has an element of that kind of mockery to some extent. And I'm not ta talking about Colin. I'm willing to go deep on this one for now. They, I really appreciate the Virgo play here. I'll give you a little more. I'll give you a little more. Not, not... I know I said I was going deep. I don't want to go... I don't want to go too deep. I mean, you know, I'm trying to keep all the blood in my head instead of going under. Instead of going under again. The other thing I would say is that there was already a show that was kind of like that. It was called Superstar USA. Those of you who have been around a long time have heard me tell this story before. But um, those of you who haven't, go look it up. Because you're not going to believe that it's real based on what I say. It was a combination of turn of the millennium prank shows, which were largely just mean-spirited, I'll admit. We were a, a, a more... Cynical group back then in my opinion. I, I think now people are much more empathetic and compassionate than they were when I was you know 14 15 years old um, Not I'm not saying 14 and 15 year olds are, are more empathetic and passionate because I honestly as I mentioned I don't really run in those circles. I have no idea However, it was a show called Superstar USA and it was an exact carbon copy of American Idol except the point of the show was that they were trying to find the worst singer in America, but everybody that auditioned for the show thought it was just an American Idol clone. So everybody thought they were possibly getting a big break and an exposure and a record contract. Um, instead, you know, 
at least a few million Americans and, and a couple dozen Canadians were watching their hopes and dreams get destroyed every single week because the, the best singers got sent home and the worst singers got promoted to the next round. And then in the final episode, they like pulled the, the rug out from under them and went like, by the way, you all actually suck. And it was, it was kind of a weird show. Also very great, <laughs> to be honest. Also a lot of, it was a fun watch, I'm not gonna deny it. It's, it, I, I don't know, that it might be the most mean-spirited show in, in, that I've ever seen at least. I don't know, dude, I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little spiced here. Like there's something, uh... I don't think we take it. There's something a little different, you know, like... A bad singer knowing they're bad. And having fun with it, who cares? That's just a nice night at karaoke, right? A bad singer who is being gaslit on national television into thinking they're amazing and probably like being enabled to start their hopes and dreams and be like, I'm gonna be an actual like huge star. It's, it's a little, it's different for sure. I was gonna say I don't know how I feel about it, but I definitely know how I feel about it. I don't feel guilty having watched it, specifically just because I was like, you know... I was maybe like 13 when it aired. What does a 13 year old know about just about anything? Just knew a lot about 2 Fort. But as an adult, I, w I would feel a little weird watching it. I'm not gonna say I wouldn't watch highlights on YouTube though. Yo, 99 poison bombs plus unlimited poison bombs. I ain't sweating it. So that's, t I mean, TV was weird when I was a, there was, there was a lot of shows that combined reality TV with, uh, with prank shows. Like, uh, Joe Millionaire was like an exact carbon copy of The Bachelor. Except they lied to all the women on the show to make them think that the uh, the bachelor was very wealthy, and then you know it turned out he wasn't wealthy, as we all knew the whole time. And um, you know, I I kind of feel weird about it now because at the time there, and I think a lot of people would still look at it like this bizarrely enough. But at the time, I think a lot of people were like. You know, let's see if these women actually love him or if they just love the idea of his money. And then at the end, you know, they're like, I still love you, Joe. And then, you know, the tabloids were like, ah, they got divorced after like 10 days or something like that. But like, now, I think we were just naive then. These are people going on a reality show to marry a millionaire. You think they're actually looking for love? Let's not be ridiculous. You lied to those poor women. <laughs> I'm not saying they don't deserve a certain element of, uh, you know, derision because of the fact that this is what they pursued in the first place, but at the same time, you kind of gave them like a, you sold them a bill of sale that was like, hey, do you want free money? And then they were like, yeah. And then you were like, guess what? You're a gold digger. This money isn't free, it actually comes with strings attached. Also, there is no money. It's, it's very... It was a weird era of television, let's put it that way. Just a weird era. Yo, now we're talking. I mean, we basically cannot die here, just to be honest with you. It's it's unlikely. Um, at least. I hope it's unlikely. I do feel like we, we're lost in the sauce again. How do we have so few items? Oh, we got super lucky there. Then there was also uh, the other one, Who Wants to Marry a Multimillionaire? Where there was just... It was like the love connection or the dating game. And then uh, there was another surprise on that one when the multimillionaire proved to not only not be as wealthy as originally um, advertised, but like also had a history of domestic abuse. So, you know, a lot of those shows I feel were not really uh, as well thought out as, <laughs> as they, they could have slash should have been, or would be if they were made in the modern era, which they probably would not be. But there was one great one, and I, it, trust me when I, first off, it's not great television, but it's a funny idea, 
And secondly, I cannot believe that I'm about to praise, <clears throat> pardon me, a Spike TV television program. But it was a television program called the, uh, the Joe Schmo Show. There you go. I, it took me a second to reach into the old memory banks. It was Big Brother. However, all of the house guests were actors who knew they were in on a joke. Except for one guy who thought he was playing on this reality show for real. So it was legitimately like a comedy version of the Truman Show. Imagine Big Brother, but only one person is not an actor. And the other people are all there to like propel storylines with the, the, the non-actor. It was good stuff. It also has... Uh, it's very weird to go back and watch clips of it because like some comedians and, and actors and actresses kind of got their start or at least the first time I saw them was on that. Like Kristen Wiig is on it and um, the guy, I, I used to know his name and this is legitimate. You're going to believe me because you've been watching a while but um, the, the guy who plays Rickety Cricket in, uh, in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia was also on it and he played like a like a bad boy, the bad boy of the house. There's always, a, it, these shows always had a, a bad boy. Oh, they always had like a puck. Puck's a graffiti artist who pays for his groceries via the trust fund his dad left him. And you're like, oh, Puck. Puck just needs a hug. But instead of getting the hug, he's going around going, frick you, Monica. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the t kind of television that was on. There, I mean, honestly, if you want, tr if you wonder why I like trash reality television in addition to prestige television, like you know, Better Call Saul, I have to put that in there to, to defend myself. I apologize. Um, the reason we'll stick with the sun card. The reason I like that stuff, I think, is because I grew up in an era with shows like the ones I described, or like the dating show Next. On on MTV, you ever see that one? Basically, like, they there were there were two kinds of episodes, but they were basically exactly the same, except it just changed whether the a man or a woman was in the principal position. So there's like one eligible bachelor or bachelorette. It's not a marriage show. This is just a dating show. And um, hold on, I just had to focus momentarily because things are more tricky than they should be. This is unlikely to- oh, this is actually, like, with chaos, this is one of the better options for a deal with the devil. I can't believe we didn't get tagged there. Our speed is pretty low. Uh, lump of coal, please. Lump of coal, please. Uh, you know, you know, we got a demon heart, I'll take it. Um, so, like, let's say there was one woman on the show that is, like, she's the, the coveted object, for lack of a better word, and there is probably much better words. Um, there would be, like, seven dudes on a bus. And they would all be talking to each other. And then one by one, they would go on like a little date with her. And then the bus would drive. They'd be like, we're going to the arcade now. Um, and then, so like one dude would get off. And he'd be like, my name's Trey. And I'm a DJ slash tattoo artist in Hollywood City, California. And then Trey would walk out and they'd have like really awkward small talk. And the whole premise of the show is that the lady's in control. If she's ever getting bored for even a split second with what the dude's doing or saying, she can just say, NEXT! And then wordlessly, whoever was talking to her has to go back to the bus. His time has ended. So it was a, it was, you know how like on, uh, America's Got Talent? If you've never seen the show, you know, that makes two of us, but I've seen clips, you know, on social media, uh, endlessly for the past decade and a half, um, can you believe that this eight-year-old can play the piano? Wow. Truly mind-blowing. Um, anyway. Is it, you know how, like, they can hit the X button? And if they all hit the X button, then the person gets embarrassed and has to leave? It was like that, but for, like, instead of a human being's talents, it was like an evaluation of that person in general. <laughs> and what was really funny is, like, most of the time, people were really polite. And some of the times, people were, like, real pieces of garbage, which I, again, like I'm good friends with somebody who was on a reality show. I'm not saying you have to be a piece of garbage to be on a reality show. I just think that there are gradations, you know, involved. If you're like, yeah, I'll go on next. I think that that says something about your personality 
more than it says something. Like, you know what? I, I know that sounds judgmental. That's because it is judgmental. You should just basically trust your instincts on that one. Um, but, like, there's not too many people that are like, you know, hey, I'm like a 24-year-old dude with, like, a normal job and a normal personality. Um, you know what I'd like to do is have the opportunity to basically just make women feel bad <laughs> by telling them next um, that's my two cents at least but anyway when you get like real pieces of garbage on the show sometimes like a dude or a lady would just walk out of the bus and the guy would be like next and you're like come on man that's just that's just disrespectful that you would next somebody based on their looks what you should say is next based on their personality because their personality led them to being on this trash in the first place don't don't hold it against the the looks department yo let's go anyway so these were the the shows of my of my teenage years <clears throat> sorry i got the the Mucus throat. It's don't don't go. Um, oh, monka s. No, it's like we woke up early to go to the doctors today. I was last night. I went. Hey, Kate. What time is our doctor's appointment tomorrow? And she was like, "Don't sweat. It's late. It's like four. And then before bed, she was like, "I'm gonna double check." And she double checked, and she was like, "Actually, it's 9 a.m." <laughs> Just ne it's fine, and it's over. It's not that early for one. But, you know, it's also not in our backyard. You know, we had to go there. So I, I'm up a little bit earlier than usual. And it's it's always like a rude awakening when you're like, ah, time to go to sleep and get a good sleep. And then you remember something. This doesn't happen that often. But you remember something at, like, the last minute where you're like, ah, you know how I thought I was going to get a normal sleep? Actually. And by the way, you're going to compare us. You're going to compare your experiences with mine. And I think that's a strength of, like, these Isaac episodes. But really, you should not compare what I just said to, you know, if you live a, a more normal and structured life than me. It's not a fair comparison. It's like, you know, Iron Man comparing himself with, like, you know, Brock Lesnar. Yeah, Brock Lesnar is, like, a big guy. But he doesn't have an arc reactor in his chest. You know, he, he didn't... He didn't build his own iron. Anyway, you get the idea. The metaphor kind of fell apart. You should compare me with other streamers. Where, you know, sometimes, like, a game will come out at 10 a.m. And they'll tweet, like, uh, gotta reset my sleep schedule so I can be ready for that game to come out. Yes, I am insulting my own industry here. Yes. Yes. Pre precise. Why? I'm just like that, I suppose. I've asked myself that same question many times. I can't resist. I don't I don't know. Well, I mean, I, I'm sure I can resist. There is just a little... I, I really think... I don't, th I don't know if it's genetic or it, if it's my upbringing. But, like, my grandfather was the same way. I'm much better at it. Or at not doing it, I should say, than, than he is slash was. Um, we're estranged. <laughs> Sorry. That was, <laughs> I didn't want to make it... Awkward, but I was like, is slash was is like an even more awkward way to describe a person that's alive. I don't know if he's still like that anymore. I haven't talked to him in like, you know, 13 years or something like that. But anyway, he, um, he's hilarious. It's a, but he, he, he can't keep his mouth shut when it would benefit him. So I've inherited a lot of that in the sense that like, oftentimes through my head, the number, the, fir the first thing I think of in a lot of situations is just like an immediate gotcha. It's like when somebody says something like earnest about their life, the first thing my brain does is like, hey, we could really rib them over this. <laughs> and the vast majority of the time, I don't do it. With people that I'm close friends with, I'll do it now and then. That's like, you know, I'll, Malph and I can, can rib each other and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Hold on, I don't... I didn't even know the bomb was there, dude! But, uh... Here, I'll give you an example, and this is is both like one of my because it's my mom's dad. It's one of my mom's favorite stories about him, and and also one of mine, you know, secondhand. Even though I was there, I don't remember the conversation, um, but I've I've heard the story many times where like we had a a skylight in our old place, and I'm gonna tell you, you're picturing like a palatial estate. It was not like that. It was just a window on the ceiling, um, and. Uh, 
my grandma was like, it, it was in the bathroom, which is a little weird, I'll admit. Um, there's options. That's that's going to pay off for us here. Um, but uh, my grandma was talking and she was like, you know, I don't really like that there's a skylight in the bathroom because I always worry when I'm in there. Like, what if, uh, you know, some pervert got up on our roof and he was looking at me while I was changing or something like that. And then my grandpa said something like, uh, are you crazy, woman? Who would want to see you naked? And then she said, without missing a beat, I know one person who wouldn't mind. And then he said, well, that dude must be as crazy <laughs> as I am. Which is just... I, I you know, I've, I've watched a lot of comedic productions in my life. Maybe I'm biased because I've got a uh, personal connection to this story, but for my money is one of the funniest improv lines I've ever heard in my entire life. It's got so many layers. If you're, if you're unfamiliar with the joke, the joke is that he is the guy, by the way. I'll, I'll at least give you the first little bit of that. So, ba I mean, if you want a, an analysis, if you want the master class, she basically, she thought she got him. Because she was like, you know, hey, you insulted my appearance, in, you know, in a pretty mean-spirited way, honestly. Um, that people don't talk to their spouses like that anymore. But they're cut from a different era, you know? Um, and then she was like, well, you know, you want to see me naked, you old perv? And then he went, you know, he must be as crazy as... It's just a good joke, okay? Don't ruin it with via analysis. It's a great line. I, I've got that in me uh, sometimes. Not not as bad. Like, my, my grandpa got himself in trouble a lot by not keeping his mouth shut. But he also got off some sick burns, dude. Like, some absolutely brutal verbal takedowns as a result of his quick wit and poor impulse control. No thank you. I'm straight up ready for this run to be over, dude. Like... I'm not really complaining because uh, here's what I'm gonna say. Thank God I took Satanic Bible, which is really a long way of saying thank God Satanic Bible showed up because I almost never don't take it whenever it shows up. But if we had not taken it, we would have been absolutely bodied on this run. And I actually feel like you're gonna look at this run and be like, what's he complaining about? But really, if you look at the stats, the run kinda sucks. We, the only reason we even have 5.82 damage is because we got to gulp the curved horn trinket. Were it not for that, we would be at 5 rate of fire, which is admittedly great, and 3.82 damage, which is horrendous! Like, we're, we're relying on, on number 2 to do all our damage for us. I don't know, I, I'm kind of feeling like our, our biggest damage dealer is our tears. Our second biggest damage dealer is number 2. I really think our third biggest damage dealer was Demon Hearts from getting hit. <laughs> Explosivo's doing something as well. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna throw it all out there. Explosivo's doing good stuff. But anyway, it was a very banter-rich episode today. If you enjoyed it, and I'm assuming if you watched all 38 minutes and 33 seconds up to this point, you did enjoy it. Click the like button. It's free. Is the easiest way to send a message to me as a creator. I like this. Make more. And more importantly, for my standards at least, it sends a message to YouTube that says, Hey, people like this guy's content. Show it to more people. More people come around. It's a better ecosystem for everybody. So if you enjoyed the episode, please click the like button. Apart from that, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya!